In this video, I would like to introduce relativistic quantum chemistry, which is important for heavy element chemistry. Don't worry too much. It should be very easy and fun for you. I hope you have already learned this formula in high school, the law of conservation of energy. This is coming from the Newton equation, which is also called classical mechanics. Kinetic energy is represented as 1 over 2 times mv squared. Potential energy depends on the field, created at the position R, denoted as XYZ coordinate. Some of these two terms is constant, and we call it, total energy. If you ride on a roller coaster, you can understand this meaning. When you are on the top, potential energy is maximum, and kinetic energy is minimum, and the speed is very slow. But when you go down, potential energy is minimum, and kinetic energy is maximum so the speed is fast. This equation is actually applicable only for the big systems like visible things for us, balls or planets etc. For small systems, such as an electron, which is very important to understand chemistry, we need to think about different laws, called quantum mechanics. The main quantum mechanics equation is called a Schrödinger equation. Actually, the Schrödinger equation is very similar to the Newton equation. If we represent the kinetic energy, using momentum p, instead of velocity v, it becomes 1 over 2m, times p squared. Then the same term exactly appears, in the Schrödinger equation here. But if you look at very carefully, there is a strange mark on the top of p. This is called hat, and it indicates that this p hat is no more than a variable or function, but an operator. This p hat is called as momentum operator, and it means the operator taking a partial differentiation with respect to coordinate. This h bar is just a constant. The potential energy and total energy is similarly found, but you can find a big difference between Newton and Schrödinger equation here, psi r. This is called wave function, and they are inserted in the left of both sides of the Newton equation. Then what is the wave function psi r? Actually, the square root of the absolute value of wave function, corresponds to the probability density, at the position r. In quantum mechanics, we cannot specify the exact position of the electron, at a certain moment. But we can only say, where the electron probably stays. It is very different from classical mechanics. So if we know the wave function, then it tells us, where an electron is probably found in atoms or molecules. This is the atomic wave functions indicating s orbital, p orbitals, d orbitals, and f orbitals. This means that we may find an electron inside the balloon, red or blue whichever, with more probability. Then, what do we solve, for the Schrödinger equation? Actually, this potential function is different in various atoms or molecules. For example, if we want to solve the H2O system, we can fix this potential for H2O, and define H hat. Then we should obtain, energy E, and wave function psi, which approximately satisfies with H hat psi equals to E psi. Especially for general multi-electronic systems, we cannot obtain the exact wave function, which satisfies this form. So we need to use a computer, to obtain the approximated E and psi. This energy, E, is very important. It is used to discuss the reaction energy, activation energy, and wavelength of absorption, or emission light, and also used to find out the stable molecular structure. Then, why relativity? This is because, the speed of electron, with a strong Coulomb force, is close to the speed of light, in order, not to attach to the nucleus. This is the nucleus, with atomic number Z, and this is an electron. And the Coulomb force, between them, is described as multiplication of two charges, minus E times Z E, over the square root of distance R. When, is the Coulomb force large? It should be in large Z, or small R. In other words, it should be large, in heavy element systems, or electronic properties close to the nucleus. This is an interesting example, 
And I hope, you can share this story with your friends. The average speed of 1s electron, is represented as, atomic number C, in the atomic unit. In contrast, the speed of light, is represented as, 137, in the same atomic unit. So in the case of gold, Z is 79, the speed of 1s electron, is almost 60% of the speed of light. Note that, it is only valid, for the hydrogen-like atoms, which contain only, one electron. In the case of gold, it is a U78+, plus, highly charged cationic atom. But now, you are certainly aware that, we should think relativity, for heavy element systems. Then, we look at classical relativistic energy, and it is represented as, E squared form. So E, itself, should be the root of this term, and it contains, the speed of light C, momentum P, and mass. Okay then, we got it now. To make a quantum mechanical equation, we should write a hat, on the top of, P, and insert, two wave functions. That's it. But, there is a problem. This P hat means differentiation, but after the differentiation, we should take a root. This is actually impossible to do, and we cannot define, the root operator. But there is a great trick. Actually, we can find the parameters of alpha and beta, which satisfy this equation. This is a fun quiz for you. Please expand the left hand side, and compare it to the right hand side. Can you find good numbers for alpha, and beta? It looks impossible, but, it is possible, if we choose, alpha and beta, as matrices. This is because, in the case of matrices, alpha times beta, and beta times alpha, can be different, whereas, it is not possible, for scalar values. The minimum size of the matrices, are 4 by 4. They look like 2 by 2, but this sigma and i, are 2 by 2 matrices, and nested in alpha and beta, so finally, they are 4 by 4. Now, we can arrive at a simple, and beautiful equation, for relativistic quantum mechanics, called, Dirac equation. As you remember, these alpha and beta are 4 by 4 matrices, and this energy E, is one dimensional, scalar value. Then we should take, for component vector, for the wave function itself. Otherwise, the dimension of the left and right equation, is not consistent. So, we have to think about, four wave functions in the Dirac equation, and it is actually complicated to solve. Then how much important, the relativistic effect, in chemistry? This picture is an example, showing the energy of d and s orbital of group 6 elements, chromium, molybdenum, tungsten, and seaborgium. In the case of chromium, the non-relativistic and relativistic results are similar, but if it goes to heavier, two results become different. And in the case of seaborgium, 7s and 6 d levels are interchanged. So you can see the breakdown of the Schrödinger equation, when the elements become heavier. Finally, I address another interesting relativistic effect, the color of gold. This yellow color of gold is coming from relativity, and if there is no relativistic effect, the gold color is similar to silver and nothing interesting. Thank you for your attention.